Hi everyone, my name is Joe and I'm with the Safety Nerds. Today I would like to talk to you about the most common energy found on a construction site, mechanical energy. Mechanical energy comes in two forms. The first form is kinetic energy, or the energy associated with motion. The second form of mechanical energy is potential energy, or the energy that changes with the object's vertical position. Here's Dave to show you that when this weight is lifted, its potential energy changes. So any object in motion or that has a change in its vertical position can have mechanical energy. Some examples is a car, as it moves down the road, it has kinetic energy due to its motion. Another example is a baseball. When it's hit, it can have mechanical energy due to its kinetic energy from its motion, but also potential energy from its change in vertical position. Mechanical energy can be found anywhere on a job site and is capable of causing a bunch of different injuries. Let's take a look at some of the most common injuries. The first example is the use of a nail gun. Nail guns boost productivity for nailing tasks and are powerful yet easy to operate. They are also responsible for an estimated 37,000 emergency room visits each year. Injuries with nail guns happen in many ways, such as the unintended nail discharge from a double fire. 75% of nail gun injuries involve soft tissue damage, while the other 25% involve structural damage like fractures. 65% of nail gun injuries occur in the hand, but other common sites include the head, neck, chest, and abdomen. Our second example is heavy equipment injuries. While mechanical incidents can be caused from speed, they can also be caused from weight. Most equipment used on site is very heavy and capable of causing serious injury. The heavier the object, the more intense an injury is likely to be. The close proximity of construction equipment with workers means equipment can easily impact a non-attentive worker. Injuries caused by heavy equipment can be minor, such as fractures or even as severe as death. Our last example is the use of a grinder and its ability to kick back. Sometimes a grinder in use can kick back in the opposite direction and make contact with the worker. Depending on the position and the focus of the worker, the grinder may be stopped before hitting the user. If the grinder is not stopped, it can be forced into the operator leading to severe injury. The high speed disc of angle grinders does not respect your clothes or body and the injuries produced can be disfiguring, permanently disabling, or even fatal. So for the rest of the video, we're going to focus on grinder kickback. Here's a demonstration that we built to understand grinder kickback a little bit better. In the display, there's a grinder focused to a single point, and when this pipe is pinched onto the blade, it goes ahead and produces grinder kickback. So now that you've seen it in regular speed, let's go back to the slow motion lab to understand it further. Welcome to our slow motion lab. Here you can see the wheel starting to spin. The electrical energy from the outlet is transformed into mechanical energy which makes the wheel spin. Now let's accelerate to when the wheel reaches full speed and let's introduce a steel pipe. At this point, energy becomes constant in the wheel and is at its maximum. As you can see, when the cutting technique is proper, the wheel will just cut through the pipe and only the expected results will happen. The pipe will be cut and sparks will appear, nothing more. However, if improper cutting techniques or defective materials are used, which are here represented by the rotation of the steel pipe, the excess energy can cause kickback from the equipment. Here, the grinder is pushed away from the pipe. Here, you can clearly see that even though the wheel is spinning counterclockwise, the kickback happens clockwise. But how is that possible? Why is there a kickback? So now that we've seen the slow motion lab, let's go into the exploration lab to understand it further. Welcome to the Safety Nerds Explanation Lab. Now we are going to try to understand the science behind grinder kickback. Grinders work under the principles of rotational energy. Rotational energy is kinetic energy, which is equal to one half times the mass times the velocity squared. In the case of a grinder, the kinetic energy is rotational. The formula is one quarter times the mass of the disc times the radius of the disc squared times the rotational speed of the disc squared, which is in angles per second. Here you can see the formulas related to the mass of the disc, the size of the disc, and the speed the disc is spinning. Let's take a grinder that is being turned on. Here is the wheel's energy evolution. First, the electrical energy will enter the wheel, making the wheel start to turn. Second, as the rotational speed will increase, the energy will increase as well. Finally, when the speed will plateau, then the energy will also stagnate. Now let's imagine that the wheel is suddenly stopped. At that point, the energy is still high. The law of conservation of energy, which states that the energy is neither created or destroyed, assures us that the energy in the wheel is still present. 
but what will it do? You must now consider Newton's third law, which states every action has an equal and opposite reaction. This is perfectly illustrated by a bouncing tennis ball. The ball doesn't just land on the floor, it bounces in the exact same direction. In the grinder, when the wheel is stopped, the force is in that direction. Therefore, the reverse force will be in that direction. Moreover, since the wheel has been stopped, the wheel is not able to turn in a reverse way, which means that the force will also apply on the grinder itself. In conclusion, the grinder will be pushed back, creating a kickback. So now that we understand the science behind grinder kickback, let's go over some of the measures to keep yourself safe when working. First, make sure you're wearing all your personal protective equipment. Make sure you're wearing ear protection, eye protection, as well as good leather work gloves. Next, you want to make sure that the material you're cutting is properly braced so it doesn't pinch the wheel while cutting. Last, you want to make sure that your equipment's being used in accordance with the manufacturer's specifications. So in conclusion, mechanical energy surrounds us all over on a job site. It depends on how big, how heavy, and how fast an object is. We need to be able to anticipate how it's stored and how it's released to be able to plan our work safely. On behalf of the safety nerds, I want to say thank you and be safe.